So we're back again, and we're working on the close-up of this um, Marguerite and this daisy. Um, and so what I've done is picked out some of the brighter petals as they extend over the grey background part. of What I want to do here is to re-emphasise the darks behind in order to operate as a foil to the brightness of those petals. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to carry on as I've got the white paint ready here now. I might as well see where it's located, the brightest white. I'll try and find every part of this daisy where the brightest white is located and be aware that it's not everywhere. Like with my eyes half closed, there are certain transitions from bright to dark that are really marked and it's here at the edge where the light has fallen from the window. Um, that's what I notice anyway. And there's a little leg coming down here. And as I was saying earlier, to notice the shape of the spaces between the petals too and the grey that will occupy the, that space. But the next thing I might do now, I'm wondering whether to do the green of the stem or like I'm trying to figure out what's the next most important thing. And I think maybe, uh, yeah, I'm going to just fill in that triangle of um, Payne's grey here because that seemed to me to be quite significant to deepen the tone of the grey that occupies that triangle. It's a bit tricky when the white is already down to deepen the tone in between the petals and not, and not get disturb the white that's on them. But it's worth um, taking a bit of time to do that. And you notice that the, the Payne's grey is a lot thinner than the white paint because, of course, the Payne's grey doesn't have to cover over anything significant, really. And it's dark enough to um, make an impact when it's thinly applied. I'm just, this is laziness now, but I, I've not got any paints grey on the palette, so, so I'm just watering down what's, what's already there and just spreading it out. But it, I think it's working okay. Just to kind of identify more clearly where the petal stops. And actually, if I print an edge here, it feels like it's that color in there. And maybe I could put even a wash of that over the center of the daisy too, because it's not really all that bright. And I'm seeing that there's um, some kind of a shadow in there. Now I'm going to use some green. This is Hooker's green. And I think that's a good color mixed with the Van Dyke brown. So that when I put stuff into the green, it's to knock the color out of it a bit, because really what I want to describe is the stem that's in shadow a bit at the back of the flower. Do you know? So I'm putting some brown and some ultramarine blue into it in order to deaden the color of it a bit. And now I'm looking at where that bulb of the, the dark bit is in relation to the center of the daisy. It sits back and above the center of the daisy a little bit. And um, I'm actually looking at it with the garden behind. So when I move a bit to my left, I can see it with the pole behind. And it's very similar in tone to the grey that's, that's behind the flower. So it's okay that it's a bit dark. And especially where the petal meets the green, it's good to have a significant dark there. So it reads as though the petal is overlapping the... Um, darker area and I'm going to put out some paints grey for myself because I wanted to um, read as being different from the um, green that I've just put on and so I do need I think a little bit more paints grey which is really very close to black but I find it a helpful colour you know not to use it too much but because it can deaden things if you've got too much of that paints grey everywhere but I think it's a useful color to sharpen an edge. So I'm going to start by sharpening the, the edge of the triangle that's here between these two petals. I want to stand back too that I'm not getting kind of trigger happy with all my sharpening and that maybe I've done enough. But I find that when you are painting in between the gaps, you might want to also um, soften. Let me just tell you what I mean now. I'm going to fill in there. So I want the, uh, the edge that's seen to be the one that's here and here. I don't want this to be a sharp edge out here. So I'm going to dissipate the edge of that a little bit more, maybe by putting some water in um, and just brushing over them back. So 
so that we're not focusing on the edge out here, but the edge of where the background meets the petal, because that's what we want to, um, to, to model, really, the, the flower. Okay, so just letting it be a bit nondescript as we go out the way there. And I think it comes all the way up to that bright petal there, too. I'm just going to stand back and have a look again now. I think we're starting to feel like maybe, I know that it's not all described, but it feels like as soon as you think you've done enough, you can stop, really. And even doing a, f a bit on the other flowers might encourage you to do less here, too. Um, but because I want to do a demonstration of start to finish a flower, I am going to keep going with this one just a while longer. Um, and what I notice is that there's a line of background coming in. And if that were to continue, it would shoot through the centre of the, the yellow daisy towards the back, towards the point of the triangle. So I'm, I'm saying that because I recommend that you really do your best when you are putting a dark and light contrast in to find really the position of it rather than just guess. So if you know, if you continue the diagonal line, it'll, I think, shoot through the back of the triangle there. I think I've made it a bit too long though, so I'm just going to take the take the edge off it with this clean brush and a bit of water. I feel like there's more space there than I had left. Okay. Um, and then there's this um, petal shooting off at a right angle. And that one that curls around where the background meets the green. And I'm, kind of, I'm just going to do this because I think I can lose it again a bit. And we've got the white still on the brush here. It's good to have a few brushes the same so that you can keep one for the lights and one for the darks. I use the burgundy brush set because it has a few square brushes. That's the one that, um, you know, it has that kind of a brush handle. It has a few flat brushes so I can, but any flat brushes will do as you can see. Right, I'm going to lift this up higher because that petal needed to be higher than I put it. So I'm just putting the white on to extend it up higher and to meet the space between the petals there, making it a bit finer. And then there's another petal that's rolling back and it's got a tongue almost, you know, that rolls back and it's catching the light where it rolls back. Um, and then there's another one knocking the edge off that. I mean, I'm going into more detail than I really need to hear. Um, and I think, to me, it feels like a daisy. It's all right. It feels like the marguerite does. And like everything else, sometimes it's nice to leave it kind of half finished, to leave it 80% done, you know. I think we spoke about that, like being 80% full after dinner. Um, all right, I was going to, the alarm, oh, I've got a minute and a half. So one other thing that I was going to explain, Norma, was the um, the darks, the darkest darks. Remember I said if I'm putting the lightest lights in, I probably also want to describe the darkest darks. And there's a dark green here in between the petals of the daisy that's really quite dark. Um, and one that comes down in between two daisy flowers. So I'm half closing my eyes and finding a shape, forgetting it's a, an area of, of, um, lee, of foliage and everything, and just seeing where are these dark plateaus especially explained? Where are they singing out especially dark? And that's what I made with the ultramarine blue and the Van Dyke brown and just a touch of, of the blue because I want to identify something that's going to be as dark as the flower is bright just to kind of help with them. Um, I think it's, it gives you a license once you put something bright in, it gives you a license to, um, to do something equally dominant in the darks. And it might be that you could take a bit more time working on the color there, that's a little bit colorful. So I'm gonna put some Payne's gray on top so that it's not quite so dominant a green. And that, because sometimes when a green is very colorful, it'll stand out more than you want it to. Really, I want the green to be a foil for the, purples and the other flowers to stand out and printing that I think further subdued it printing it with my hand there so that's my time up now we're needing to clean up here and I hope it's been helpful maybe I'll just turn off that and um, um, true to form I'm going to do one last thing so I've got my my thumbprint here 
and just to locate where the center of that daisy might be and your your as i say now your hands are a great thing they often will do um, the job better than the paintbrush will and i subdued the brightness of that center with them um, a little bit of the van dyke brown any dark brown into it would work um, you can see how you could get trigger happy can't you i'm feeling like i want to put some petals on that one now as well but um just one or two to, to explain again this thing of um finding where the brightest ones are and putting them in might mean that you don't have to do an awful lot of work elsewhere so the bright petals again are, be, are being hit by the light from the window that's coming in from the right and landing here and maybe it's nice too to where the where the daisy interacts with the pot to have the petal come down over the pot um, this will be greyer but it's helpful i think just for me to know that that's petal rather than background or something yeah so there we have it thanks very much for watching i'll bring you over so you can so you can see what i was working on there they are and uh, it's been a pleasure all the very best.